What's up everybody? It's been a while since I've made a tutorial, but um, today I figured I'd show you guys how to install just a basic vanilla Minecraft server. So this doesn't have any mods on it, and it's basically just if you want to play the newest version of Minecraft with your friends, see what's going on, I'm going to show you how to set up the server. So it's really, really simple. It doesn't take very long to do. The first thing you want to do is go to minecraft.net. Once you're here, you want to go to download and it's gonna ask you to make an account but there's a really really easy way around that you can just go to minecraft.net slash download I'll actually just have a link for that in the description it should bring you to this page right here to let you actually download the game but you don't need the game what you're looking for is scroll down the page and you want to get to here where it says download minecraft java edition server so that's what we're working with today is the java edition of minecraft so let's download this file it's going to send you to a page right here. It's going to explain basically what I'm going to show you guys how to do. So we're just going to create a batch file to run the server. And it's going to be really simple. So basically, you want to click right here to download the Minecraft server uh, Java file. You're going to need Java to do this. So if you guys are already playing Minecraft with Java, uh, you should be fine. Uh, if this shows up, click keep because... Chrome gets all freaked out about jar files. So we're going to take this file, we're going to drag it to my desktop, we'll make a new folder, we're just going to call it uh, tutorial for now, put it in there. We're going to rename this Minecraft server, and that was just because it was named something stupid with a 6 after it, because you're going to have to remember this in a second. So now let's go back to the web page. And we're going to have to create something called a batch file. We're going to have to put this in here. So the easiest thing way to do that would be just go new text document. And we'll just call this run. And change the .txt here to .bat. And it's going to, if, it's going to say if you change a file name extension, the file might become unusable. Are you sure you want to change it? Click yes. And if you guys don't see that .txt extension right there, I'm going to show you guys how to enable that right now. I'm using Windows 7. Windows 10 is pretty much the same way. What you want to do is you want to find your folder and search options. This window will look basically the same in Windows 10. So you come down here and you'll find a little place you can scroll through. And right here it's going to show hide extensions for known file types. Yours will be checked if you don't see that. Uncheck this box. Click apply and every file that you have anywhere will have an extension after it to tell you what it is. So now we have a batch file here. We're going to edit it with a, you can use notepad or notepad plus plus. Right now we're going to edit it with notepad plus plus. So we're going to go back to the website, pull this up, and we're going to type this in. Exactly. We don't have to type it in, we can just copy it. So we're going to copy this right to here and we didn't put an underscore in the name of our server file so this right here is going to be what the name of this is right here we just named it minecraft server.jar so you want to just name it minecraft server.jar in here we didn't have the point one one point fourteen on there so we're just going to go minecraft server.jar and the no gui what that will do it says if you don't want to start the server with its graphical user interface, it's going to basically pop up another window and that can use some of your graphics. So basically what we're going to be doing is just opening up in a command prompt. So we're going to save this. We don't, we don't need to edit that anymore. Let's go back to our folder with everything in it and then we should just be able to click run. What it's going to do is it's going to open everything up and it's going to create a couple files here. Server properties, I'll show you guys that in a minute and we'll edit that. But the first thing we're going to do is go into the, uh, the EULA, the End User License Agreement. So we're going to have to edit a uh, value in here. We're going to have to change this to true. We're going to save the file. We're going to X out of it. And then we're going to run everything again. And this time it should create a bunch more files over here. If this pops up, allow it through so that, you know, it can get through your firewall. It's preparing my spawn area, as you can see. And once you 
once it's done, we'll end up, oh, it's done now, so we're going to type in the stop command, which will stop the server. And now we come over here and see what it created for files. We have our logs, which in here, this will show basically the same thing we were just looking at in that command prompt window. It logs everything right here. Um, this is our world file, so this is our physical Minecraft world. We can copy this, move it to different servers, do what we need to do with this. Banned IP addresses, banned players, so this is the player name or the player IP. This is the end user license agreement file that we edited already. This is our original Minecraft server.jar file. This is your ops file, so if you want to you know, make someone an operator on your server and give them access to use cheats and commands and stuff, this is where you would put their username is in here. Uh, I'll make different videos on how to set those up. This is our original bash file we made. This is our server.properties file. Uh, this is where you would go in and edit like the message of the day, the amount of players that can join the server, the amount of chunks that can spawn, the port, various other things. I'll, we'll go through that in a second. User cache, this will show everybody that's ever joined your server. And the whitelist, this is how you can add users to the list of servers of users that are allowed to join your server. So we'll go into server properties. Let's edit that with notepad real quick. Make this full screen. And if you come over here, you can see we have spawn protection. What that's going to do is that's going to basically allow people that aren't ops, they're not, it's not going to allow them to break blocks within 16 blocks of the spawn. Max tick time is six, 60,000 seconds. Uh, it's either seconds or milliseconds. I'm not sure. I think that will time the server out. I'm not 100% I'm not sure on that setting. I'm assuming that this is the port it would use. No. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. This is where you would set your port right here. Server dash port. This is 25565 is the default port for Minecraft. Uh, you guys got to understand that when you're connecting to a, a server, uh, that that data has to go through a port on a firewall and if that port isn't opened by an administrator then the firewall doesn't allow that traffic to come through so you guys are going to have to open port 25565 by port forwarding if you guys don't know how to do that I have another video on my channel explaining that there'll be a link for that in the description um, allow flight this will kick people if they're flying the level name so this is the actual folder name. See how that says world right there? Uh, if you were to change this, it would create a new world, a new folder, and it would be called that. So if I was to change this to server world, which we'll see, and you'll see that when I start the server again, it will, it will create a new world. View distance, this will load chunks for the user, so if you don't have very good internet, or if you don't want to be loading chunks really far away, you can lower this value. You can set a resource pack here with a link. If you want to spawn animals, if you want to use a whitelist, generating structures when the world you know generates for the first time. You can set the max build height right here. Right here, what this online mode does is that what this is going to do is check against Mojang servers to authenticate if a user is actually signed in and real. And if not, then they won't be able to join your server. It'll say invalid login, or if you ever get a message like that, that's the reason why that happens. If you set that to false, that won't happen. But then you got to understand that anybody can join your server with cracked Minecraft accounts and stuff like that. Level seed, you can set seed right here to create the Minecraft map. And this is where you set your message of the day. So we'll just set this to voice devs tutorial server. Oops. Yep, and we will save that file. So now we'll run the f we'll run it again. All right. So now that we have the server is completely loaded up, what we can do is we can open up our Minecraft launcher. We can launch Minecraft, and we can see if we can connect to this. And if you guys want to maybe host this server on a separate computer to save some of your resources, the way that you would connect uh, to the server on a different computer would be when you want to put the server address in, you would put the IP address of the server hosting this. So what you could do is you could, to figure that out, you'd open up a command prompt and you would type in 
IP config. And what that's going to do right here is this is the IP address of my computer right here hosting this. So if I wanted to you know, load Minecraft up on a separate PC, I could still connect to the server through that address. But because I'm on the same computer, I'm going to use a local host address or something called a loopback. So what you do is go to multiplayer, we'll allow access. And I'm not sure what my Minecraft texture pack looks all wonky right now, but we're gonna go direct connect. And we're gonna type in my loopback IP. I'm going to click join server. And I'm in. This is our Minecraft server. And if I pull up the actual server, it says Brad6305 logged in. Brad6305 joined the game. So it's all working. And yeah. If you guys have any questions, be sure to leave them down in the comments section below. And I'll do my best to answer them as quick as I can. But. Yeah, so uh, enjoy playing with your friends. Thank you guys for watching.